isolation, Conor Ben versus Chris Van Heerden. What do you think of it? Um, I think it's just another another step on that familiar trail of opponents that he's um, sort of been matched with and for, for some time now. It's what I would call a sort of a name. Sort of, is it a name? A name, but you know, a faded name. And I think that's what he's been fighting, and that's that's what he's been fed at the minute. Um, you know, Chris Van Heerden, good fighter in his day. Um, can't really remember much anything notable from him in, in recent years, but that you could say the same about Algieri. You could say the same about bloody all these, you know, Vargas, all the all these guys he's fought recently. And it's I think it's another we touch on it it's every bloody podcast we do when we talk about Conor Ben. He's just been so carefully, meticulously matched, superbly matched, really, for his development uh, and building the name, the brand, etc. And I think it's just another one of them. I think Conor Ben will win. I think he'll stop him and, you know, he's the young, fresh, hungry fighter and I think Van Heerden's best days are behind him. But, yeah, another step on that rung of Conor Ben nicely picked opponents. That is my thoughts in a nutshell. I disagree with you much on that, to be honest. I think you've hit the nail on the head. This could be any one of his last three or four opponents. And I know yeah. from a promotional point of view, I've seen bits this week of Eddie Hearn and, and Matt Room and, and Conor Ben himself and various people sort of, I don't want to say cheerleaders, but like Conor Ben fans just sort of saying, hey, you know, this is progression, it's a step up, this is like his biggest fight. And other than your latest fight being your biggest, most pivotal fight, I don't see any difference between this and some of the other opponents, some of the other people he's fought recently. So then, <laughs> my wife's just me they're clearly making too much noise. But then, um, yeah, like I think the the opponents, and it's not necessarily in terms of boxing, a step up. There might be things that Van Heerden brings and shows that, that Ben hasn't seen yet, but they're all much of a muchness. And I yeah. think while he's treading water at this level, it's quite difficult to to get behind him and and really say, like, this is the... You know the progression that they're talking about it as though it's a step up, and that Van Heerden is significantly more dangerous than than Chris Algieri was. But I don't necessarily see that he is. He's another one of these fighters who's been in with some decent names, but doesn't really have that like the high level wins himself, and doesn't really hasn't done anything to sort of put himself as like one of the elite of the sport, even in his sort of. Pump, even in his prime, like I, I, I'm sitting here, like, I don't know what I would argue is his, his, his biggest win so, or his, his best performance. Again, looking down the record, and he's, he's been in with decent opponents, been in with some good opponents, but come up short. And I think from Ben's point of view, it's it's all about that name recognition that he can yeah. look and say, well, I've beat this guy who he's only lost to so like Spence and whoever, like the same with Algeria, like he's only lost to the very best. And there is a, a certain level of credibility in that, but I don't see this posing a challenge. I think the, the question is, and has been the case with Conor Bennett, is he going to make that statement, get that knockout highlight real win like he did against Algeria? Or does Van Heerden have a bit more in the tank? Is he going to be a bit more cagey, a bit more durable? And will it will he take him rounds? That's essentially the only question that I have on that. I don't see it. I don't like see Van Heerden springing the upset by any means. And when that's your sort of main event and that's your fight, of course, I'll be sitting watching it. I think I know I will. But there's not that jeopardy. There's there's not those sorts of questions I'm posing aren't the ones of like just how big a test this will be. It's yeah. just how good Ben looks winning. I know it's interesting that you you said there you said the words tread and water and I thought you know in a hey I don't disagree with you um, we we always seem to pretty much agree on on Conor Ben and that's not without you know I am a fan of his that's the thing but I just mean the the matchroom brigade and matchroom and matchroom fans and stuff will probably tell you that like he's not and they they're like you know they, he's probably what one of matchrooms top five at the minute do you know what I mean as oh, in big easily. names big roles, easily he's created a proper niche out for himself and like I touch upon on here all the time like he's not by I don't want to say swerving but by avoiding diverting past these these British names these domestic names in 147 is like his reputation has far exceeded them now and it's like you know what I mean and you'd all you would be laughed at now if you said you want to see Conor Ben versus Lewis Crocker or Echo Essiman or, or you know Chris Jenkins or Mark, you know what I mean? You'd be like, oh, I can't bet you flatten them. It's like, 
that's the thing by by bypassing those lads in this country. Michael Mackinson even stuck people up fighters like that. Then he's like his reputation now is he's matching with the best in the business of that, aren't it? Creating stars, creating household names, uh, and he's he's on his way to becoming that by by not really doing. You know, he's he has improved. Like, don't get me wrong. You know, I always refer back to Cedric Payne the fight where he went life and death with him and Payne put him down twice and stuff. And, you know, very raw, very novicey that night. He's, you know, without a doubt, he's improved. But still, there is, as I mentioned on Twitter today, a tinge of sadness on my part that I've, we've never seen him yet in with a, you know, he hasn't found his Groves de Gale yet or his Bellew Cleverly or, or, you know, uh, someone like that or a domestic fight yet that will really ooh, get people going. Whether that comes down the line, whether that comes in the shape of David Evanesian, it remains to be seen. I have my doubts, obviously. But, you know, I think that's a cracking fight. But there's loads of good fights out there for Conor Byrne. Like you can name six, seven, eight names that you'd like to see him in with rather than these guys that he's coming to be being. And I think there's a few things to pick out of that. I think, first of all, a million percent matchroom are the best in the business. Like One of the bits I saw this week was, was Eddie Hearn sitting with Conor Byrne saying that, like, you know, the only person that's going to beat you is you and getting carried away. That's like the biggest danger you've got. He specifically, like, explicitly said, he was like, you've, you know, you've surpassed British level. You, you've got, you've proven that you're at that level. You've proven you're at European level. And now like you get into world level. And to the ca- more casual fan, like who will lap that up, it's mm. it's perfect. It's then they're, they're going away and they're going into work, whatever. Tell them the mates, oh, Connor Ben's like one of the best in the world, and he's ranked this, this, and this for like WBA or whatever. And like it's it textbook matchmaking, perfect yeah. career development. And from Ben's point of view, he's lived up to that too because, as you say, the improvements he's made technically are unbelievable. He's he's come on leaps and bounds to even get to sort of where he is now and be potentially talked about is getting him with like the top well but arguably is top 10 in the world like in terms of his rankings in terms of the, the names on his record they do compare very favorably and i saw again a bit of back and forth with um i think carl greaves has retweeted something about avanessian and a few fans going back and forth about it and like you look at avanessian sort of body work compared to ben's and yeah, I saw it, that. It's very favourable to Conor Ben in terms of the guys he's beaten and who they've been in with and all the things we've discussed already today. But, like, the problem I have, and it's you can't really prove it, is that Avanesian, even Josh Kelly, who he beat, definitely McKinson, even, like, some of the British lads, like Congo and Essiman, I would favour them if they were put in with Chris Algieri or Chris Van Heerden or Vargas or Formella. They would be going in as the favourites, so like it's con- name I forgot there. Yeah, good job. Like in terms of their ability now in 2022 and over the last couple of years when Ben's fought them, I don't think they've posed a bigger problem than those domestic and, and European fighters that we've just talked about because I hate saying like they're not coming to win necessarily. It's, they the, the will be, obviously, they'll, they'll believe they can win, they'll believe that, but I don't think they they have the ambition of, you know, world title challengers like Van, Van Heerden, I think, I see he's fought one since 2019 or something. It, yeah, exactly. His name yeah. looks all right, is it? Oh, yeah, he's fought, he's, he's been in at a high level, a higher level than Ben has, so then Ben beats him and they progress that way and it's, it is, it's it, it's textbook, it's, it's a perfect way of doing it and as I say, I think these other fighters, it's it's almost irrelevant because you can't prove it. Like, but I would have favoured them to be any of the names that Ben's been in with. Yet, because of his profile, because the excitement he brings, he's bringing the knockouts, he's bringing the power, that rawness, almost a perceived vulnerability. Like people think if Ben gets caught and clipped, he can get hurt and brings that excitement. Yeah. All of that and everything going on outside the ring contributes to the... I don't want to just say the hype, but the whole profile of Conor Ben. And I 100% think that these other fighters, these potential rivals, like they're a bit jealous of that because they'll be looking, thinking, like, here's Ben, here's a fighter I could beat. Like, he's yeah. headlining shows on the zone, selling, not selling out arenas per se, but selling, shifting lots of tickets and becoming this very popular, high profile fighter. And yet they'll 100% believe they can beat him. Yet, we know in boxing it's not fair. They're not getting that 
that um, I don't know what the word is, like the backing, I suppose, of a promoter. Like, yeah, the, the, with big promoters and stuff, but they're not getting that push and the, yeah. the treatment that Ben's getting. And I think that's where they like a bit of resentment comes from a lot of fans as well. Like they want to see him tested. They want to see him in these fights. They don't care that Avanissian's gone over to Frank Warren, but in reality, that's pretty much and put the nail in the coffin of that fight being made because we know that they're not gonna to work together. Like Hearn and Warren aren't gonna to choose no. to to risk their their sort of fighters. Like we know that and I'm not saying that I, I don't necessarily think Ben loses that fight. I think it's a good fight. It's a fifty fifty making case for either of them. But Hearn's not gonna risk his potential pay per view star sending him over to a Frank Warren show and, and losing there. Or no. like it's 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 not the done thing. It doesn't happen and Everyone knows that, so it's almost a waste of energy at this point trying to push yeah, that fight any further. I think Hearns had first hand experience as well about sort of the destruction that uh, David Evanesi can cause, you know, when he dismantled Josh Kelly. Do you know what I mean? I think that's, uh, you know, and you think he was obviously ready to, I don't want to see, you know, he's ready to make that. Evanesi and Kelly fed off the European title and stuff, but I think, as you say, Evanesi's like has moved on to, to a different promoter now, so, you know, he, he threw Josh in with him, but. Obviously, had a lot more amateur experience than Conor Ben had, but I uh, so. But for now, it's it's almost like he's not they're not quite ready to let him off off the leash yet. They'll argue that they are by facing guys like Van Heen and Algeria and that. But hey ho, it's it's in, the thing is you mentioned it there, like you know, as a hardcore fan, what would you rather see? Like you know, would you rather watch yourself Ben Van Heen or would you, you know, like at least Mark who and Chris Jenkins got it on last week. Mark who may well fight Chris Congo on Sky, you know. And, at least some of them are slowly coming out to fight each other. I know as your man's got a British title fight and stuff, or the bit, you know, against Darren Tetley. Like it's it's getting there, but there's so many names in this country where you just oh you'd love to just throw them in the mix together and you know and just hundred percent you would. And I think like you said before, like Conor Ben has surpassed that now though. It's almost seems mm. ridiculous. Oh yeah. Putting him in with Echo Esteban, like from again that promoter point of yeah. view from Team Ben, his trainer, like why are you going to take what is potentially nope. a riskier fight nope. for a lot less reward? Like, not just financially, nope. but if Ben goes in and knocks out Echo Esmond in a round, they'll be like, well, oh, why has he dropped down to British level? Or like, yeah, what, yeah. what's the point in him going from Algeria to, to fighting him? And I'm not saying he would knock him out. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. But like, nope. again, even like Avanesian and whoever, again, Michael McKinson, who's sort of on that similar, very similar level to, to Conor Ben, there's not a chance that they're going to sort of risk that because it's for the, the reward of it. Like he, he beats McKinson and then, say, McKinson, for argument's yeah. sake, fades a bit into obscurity or whatever. Ben doesn't then get probably any more credit. And again, we talk about credit like it's actually worth something. You know what I mean? few hundred fans on Twitter go, oh yeah, that's a good win. And it means absolutely nothing to them, of course it doesn't. And like, why would it? So then when they're talking about like building him, they're always sort of dangling these names. And so again, a, a tweet about um, looking at an elite opponent for his next one, should he get through this one? And then the name Adrian Broner pops up or like Amir Khan or Kel Brook. And again, it's like, these are mm. top of the welterweight division. In, no, in, in no. April of 2022, like, yeah, again, they're good names and I dare say really? they will pose a bit more risk. They're a level up, I would argue, but yeah, once again, it's it's these words and a very clever sort of wordplay and semantics of dropping over oh, elite or oh, he's after a, a genuine like top level opponent and stuff. And it's like, well, how many top level opponents are there? Are, are we talking top 50 in the world? Because that's like <laughs> still a good level, yeah. so to speak, but it's not going to do anything for sort of his development or like putting him in that again. Like, Progressing him in, in my opinion anyway, but obviously he'd be fighting my he'd be fighting my daughter next up and he Lewis Calazzo or something. <laughs> Go well, through yeah, hands up. Again, these names get trotted out almost as a joke, but then uh, yeah, Al uh, popped up and like Van Hayden's the same. Like these aren't active fighters; they're not the top contenders in the welterweight division right now. So the, to me, like Calazzo and Maidana aren't any more ridiculous than Adrian Broner. Like. Uh -huh. For as active as he's been and what he's actually done at, at welterweight and when that was, like again, it's it's someone that people can box wreck and think, oh, oh, he's beaten him with Pacquiao, he's fought him, he, he's won like 
and thrown as like a four weight world champion or something like and to, then, to then to be like oh beat him it's 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 significant in terms of that building the profile rather than sort of I don't know rather than presenting any challenge and if you can keep doing that if you can shift I think Frank Smith said six or seven thousand tickets this weekend like you can so position, ain't that in it position him as headliner you can make money off him Ben can earn well out of it. He's in no rush. He is only twenty five, and you said yeah. about his, his lack of amateur experience. Like they're not in any rush with him yet. Mm. They keep sort of hinting that they are, and the next one's going to be the big one. This is going to be big, and I think they're pretty much waiting. And this is hardly like a groundbreaking theory, but they're pretty much waiting until the belts get scattered. Obviously, Spence and Ugas fighting this week to unify. I think three of the four belts. See Crawford's hanging around there as well. Like they've got no real intention of forcing Conor Ben into a mandatory position to fight one of those three. So no. it's just sort of getting pick off these names and just sort of by the time he fights that world title, he's fought all these experienced names. And I dare say they'll hopefully get a, from their point of view, like a vacant title against an opponent they can have a pretty big say into. Oh, yeah. well, you know, it's forced. It's a, it's a mandatory. That this is the next guy on the rankings, blah, blah, blah. And then Ben picks up the desk, like the regular title or even like the full version or whatever it may be that comes available. And they can continue to have them headline and obviously then have the added bonus of like world champion and, and go from there. I think yeah. that's the sort of short to medium term plan with them, definitely. I agree with that as well. But like you said there, like, Nothing could be sniffed at that six or seven thousand tickets for a non Manchester fighter in Manchester. I think, like, with a poor to average undercard with not really many Manchester, you know what I mean? I think that's cracking that. Um, well, that, it? that, that it's shows, it's shows the value of him, that shows his current value to match him and his current stock and where he's currently at. Like, he's he's a name, and you know, getting further t- highlights his popularity, as you just said, there is stock like where he is with with match room with, with boxing in this country right now. He is one of the most exciting prospects, mm. and I say prospect at a, at a world level, but like he is one of the most exciting boxers, and I have no issue with him now be, like, being that headline act, but if I'm being super critical, which I normally am, I'd prefer to see him in some competitive fights, but yeah. I think, you know, they, they will come, and if he keeps sort of answering these questions by stopping these guys and showing that he is yeah. above them right now and levels above them, like he did with Algeria. And they can put the little short videos of him knocking these guys out. It just keeps things ticking along nicely for him. And I like, tread water might have been a bit disparaging, but ticking along, ticking over, whatever yeah. you want to call it. He's, he's just sort of, you know, staying active and keeping his name out there, picking up the wins and, He'll be learning things in the gym as well. Like, I don't know necessarily what he'll be learning in the ring, but he'll be learning things in the gym. And I think the longer that they can work with him and, and continue to develop him technically, then like you know, by the time he does get a world title shot, if that becomes the case, if that does happen, then you know he's going to be more ready for it now. In sorry, more ready for it in like now than he was four, five, five fights ago, or whatever, or. Might be another two or three fights before that happens, and like he will be more prepared, he will be more ready. So I don't Absolutely. have an issue from their point of view of what they're doing with him, but it's hard to then for me to be like this fight is more significant or better than anything that's gone yeah. immediately before. No, I totally agree with you. Um, not enough hours in the day to look at everything that's happening this weekend and everything else, but I know there's a you know we said probably be watching Conor Ben. that's probably the one you'll go for and that's the one we give most time to um, there's a three way clash on Saturday night which drives me potty when promoters do this and TV networks especially when last weekend was completely blank but you've got Conor Ben on the zone you've got the lightweight boxer tournament featuring Ryan Charlton and others on Sky and you've got Jason Cunningham on BT Sport um, defending his belt so three way clash there you've got MTK Global Come on to them in a bit on Friday night with the British title on the line. Davin Gwynn, uh, Luke Willis, Friday night. So a busy, busy weekend of domestic boxing as well. And as you said, Spence, you guys in a big clash of well away as well. But again, not enough hours in the day to talk about all them. Um, but I, three way clash, just mental. Like, yeah, you've got a lot of. You've got an extended bank holiday weekend, though. You've got Thursday night tonight. You've got good Friday, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Three big promoters in this country have put all put shows on the Saturday. It's like, drives me mad. 
but uh, it went last weekend was completely blank. Like no one's, you know, annoying. But it's what it is. In Dare I say, like obviously, like yeah, you can record stuff off TV and that now, of course you can. But I think with the zone, because it's so good to watch on catch up and like not have spoilers. It then yeah. sometimes means I don't watch their stuff live on the Saturday, and I, I find it easier to watch theirs on the Sunday morning to catch up. Like, I don't know how that will impact their viewing figures and stuff, but I, I don't know if people are, are similar or they're just going to like obviously pick and choose. And like you hope well, on Saturday it. night that the sort of fights you bothered about don't necessarily clash, and you can swap between if you know what I mean. You can swap between the events, mm-hmm. but it is as it's, it's frustrating, and it it shows again like highlights the sort of fractured nature, the fragmented beast that is boxing it's funny because like you know, I always would go for zone because I feel like I need to justify me 7 9, nine a month <laughs> not like but then forgetting like I pay for BT Sport I pay for Sky yeah, Sport but again that, like, <laughs> but we're not going to get into zone. platforms and all that yeah. because we seem as I say I, I feel like we do it all the time but like with BT Sport you can watch the Champions League or the football and you think oh well I've, I've caught up like we watch the MotoGP and stuff so it's like oh I don't feel as pressured by myself to sit and watch yeah. boxing on BT Sport but then with DAZN I'm literally paying for it just for that matchroom boxing content so no, I, feel like I, money. I need to try and yeah. catch up on as much as possible just to, to make it worth that eight quid uh, I thought the Champions League this week anyway sort of more than justified me BT Sport subscription uh, two eventful games in more different ways but anyway it's not a football podcast <laughs> what <laughs> to the Champions League anyway um, moving on Nicely wrapped up on Conor Ben. I think we both sing from the same hymn sheet on him. Moving on, 